Ladies and gentlemen, Wonderful shows us how round 255 has become possible on Black Ops 2 Zombies. I gotta give a big shout out to Wonderful, obviously, for allowing me to react to this video. Because this is a groundbreaking video for COD Zombies. We have figured out how the maximum round has been achieved in Black Ops 2 and even what it was in the first place, let's get it, wonderful. I'm excited. 255 buried. 255 I buried. Next year. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> it's coming faster than you think, man. Yeah, it. this is huge. And like, I find it also crazy that I literally got the 100 as well before this all happened. And so I feel like in a way I'm part of it, but not even, bro. This guy put in 107 hours to get this. <laughs> crazy, oh wow. One Piece, man! Shout out the One Piece logo on the bottom, too. Wow. Wait. I never would have thought that would have been possible, yeah. If you watch my buried. Also, I love the BO4 perch shaders. What the heck? Those look great. Record history video. You may remember me saying, What round is possible on Barry? It wasn't 255. The to that has varied a lot over the years. Yep. But look at it like this. The record has been going up for 10 years. Wow. How could 255 not be possible, even yeah. if it takes years more? Well, it turned out not to be a map. It only took 11 years for this map to be beat. That is insane. What other, what other game has that, where you can beat it after 11 years of playing? That's for crazy. Years, but months. Wow. In the nine months since I released that video, the record has been beaten three times. One of those times being the 10 year mystery of the unbeatable era, bro. And it was, yeah, it was 233. We were, it was not even close to 255. And it's crazy to me as well that Treyarch advertised 255 as such a big deal later on, especially in Black Ops 3. And then it was already in Black Ops 2, bro. We got baited. Quite possibly the biggest milestone of any Black Ops 2 map to date. Yes. Reaching the maximum round on the game's engine, the unbeatable record. Black Ops 2 is the buildables game. It goes to show because no other map could have gotten you close to 233 without buildables. All the wonder weapons in BO2 started losing damage at round 100, pretty much. Sliquifier, round 100. Paralyzer, round 70, because they nerfed it. But staffs, are way up into the 100s, like 130, 115, around there. It's crazy. And then the jet gun... It took it to the buildables to get it? Like, what the... You may the... also remember me saying this... While the era does seem to hinge somewhat on luck, we need a breakthrough new strategy to beat it by a significant amount. Yes. We've found ways to prolong it before, which would indicate that there are more ways to prolong it that we just haven't found yet. Well, we found the breakthrough. We found it. <laughs> Let me explain how the we literally found it. of the unbeatable error was solved. This is exciting. This has never happened to Black Ops 2 or any other COD Zombies game ever. Because World at War actually had higher rounds on Shinonuma. It was really in Darice that they started limiting the round numbers. And I think Darice is when they put in the maximum of 255. That's really where it's been. We don't know the max number yet. But still, in BO2, if it's 255, maybe it could be on BO1. I don't know. Wow. Wow. What an incredible video. This is going to be exciting, man. Because I don't even really understand what was the exact way that this got solved. You know? How? What's that? <laughs> this is the end of the mystery. Well, well. Why, why you got to do that, man? <laughs> it's Treyarch's fault. Yeah, blame Treyarch. Yeah, the classic. This has been going on for years, man. I feel like it's still going on. When we last left the buried <laughs> record, it was a three-way so tie between myself, Thysa, and Blasters at 2.33. Right, yeah. The first sign of progress on this triple joint actually came from someone who wasn't in the competitive buried scene at all. In early 2023, a player and coder named LVs took a look at a lot of different error messages that players were getting on Black Ops 2. 
and developed a program that would track certain variables that contributed to- They pulled the Shinonuma because this happened first on Shinonuma with people like Krups counting the entities and now it's come full circle onto Black Ops 2, man. That is so cool. Errors as wow. You the game. When specifically looking at Buried, the error message that most players got in world record games was this exceeded maximum amount of child server script variables. What does that mean? But what are child server script <laughs> Yeah, what is that? What's Treyarch? the max amount? Treyarch? Why was it overflowing? We didn't really know. However, LV's error tracker gave us some insight into these questions. I'm just gonna put out a guess. It must be entities. It must be the same thing that Shinonuma was based off of. That's my guess. When you load the tracker concurrently with your game, it will right. show a lot of statistics. But the important one to look at is this, child underscore max. Okay. This boiled the error down in simplest terms. The first number is the current stat. The second is the limit. Every so often, the current stat will increase by a range of one to a few hundred. What? When it reaches 65,536, the it game crashes. will error no matter what. Oh. The solution? Make the small number not go up as fast. Exactly. Easier said than done, but this brings us to our first player of the hour. LV's error tracker didn't solve the buried error by any means, but it gave buried players a trial and error tool that was worlds better than anything we'd had before. LV's released it into the wild and let the buried players have a field day sorting out what did and didn't make the child max variable go up. The first and most dedicated tester was a Brazilian player named Issues, and he did begin to find some consistencies about the variable. Some very strange consistencies. Now, Buried might have been in the Wild West, but it wasn't Issues' first rodeo. He was largely responsible for solving the mystery error on Dyrus. Oh, no way! Earlier. Yeah, because this is what I'm saying. It's about the buildables, right? Like, Die Rise has the trample steam, which is the reason why the max round has also been pushed in the last couple of years. Same thing with Buried, man. But then you go to maps like Origins on Black Ops 2, and they're pretty much at a hard cap. And same thing with Transit, because the only thing that takes out the zombies is the bus on Transit and then the tank on Origins origins after a while the staffs don't do anything the jet gun doesn't do anything so maybe this could come back into the maps with more buildables maybe it's just about understanding this child max uh error count thing that's crazy Which what I'll the talk heck about in my next world record history oh, this is fascinating man. not only that but in the span of just a year in 2020 oh he got the error wow unknown to one of the most respected Sheesh. Black Ops 2 players ever. Wow. Up with the likes of Chris Voltage and Blasters. I mean, everybody knows Chris Voltage and Blasters. These guys were hitting some of the most insane WRs on maps that people didn't even think were possible. Like, town, dog. Chris Voltage got 100 on town. Get that Collecting out of impressive map. rounds on mainly Die Rise and Buried. Yes, and for the rest reason, of the BL2 maps. he was maps. the perfect person to push the map past where it had become hard stuck for years. Right. This is Before crazy. We get into that, let's take a step back for a second for some context. Okay. Remember Okla's round 234 game from September Ooh, 2022? Yes. While it was this pushed the bar because everybody started running this strategy that he was using in the in the saloon with the trample scene because he hit 234. People didn't think 233 was beatable unless like uh, wonderful said there was a new strategy and this is the strategy he was using trample steams the whole Wasn't time considered record due to his use of cheat engine oh i see something very important in that game that but he found the strategy see sometimes cheating is the way people find these strategies it makes sense man no one had put into practice before see okla had done quite a bit of error testing on die rise and buried as well and his theory was that something with the zombie animations was causing the error. When he hit 230, in an attempt to prevent the error, he switched from using the resonator in the jug hallway to playing in saloon with the trample steam. However, he also opened the couch at the top of the stairs. 
So there oh, would be less interesting. going through the animation of jumping down from the balcony. Oh. As half the zombies would just be running straight down the stairs that the couch was blocking. That's genius. And let me explain why. The reason why this is genius is because in Origins, right, there is a glitch where you whip out your claymore after shooting all the zombies with the ice staff. And the reason you do that is because the game glitches the death animation to happen faster. And so I think what he's saying is that there's certain... Certain animations that the zombies do themselves when they travel, and especially when you get hit by the subsurface resonator, the dubstep machine, where the zombies just fly back, that probably uses a lot of memory on the game. And then the game has to wipe out all those zombies and do it again, and it keeps building and building and building that error code up until it finally crashes your game. It makes a lot of sense, man. Wow. At this point, no one wow. really attempted playing in Saloon with the couch open because... Whoa, look how dangerous. Yeah, this look is. at this. This is freaking Opa ridiculous. Only lasted four rounds in here. Wow. Multiple downs before finally. And keep in mind, four rounds in here on round 200 plus, that is like multiple hours around. That's like probably close to like two to four hours around, I would say. That's Nine. crazy. Would issues really be crazy enough to try this? Wow. The answer was yes. <laughs> yeah, was <because> <laughs> and he got it. Actually mentioned in part wow. As the only difference between Okla's game and Thyssen Blaster's games is that Okla had the couch open and Okla didn't air. Despite wow. the fact that Okla's strategy was rocky. So had... that was literally the sort of hint that we figured it out. Like that door itself in the saloon was the reason why we figured out it was the death animations causing the error. And by far the wow. highest round on Barry One door. ended in an error. The door that changed caused zombies. She noticed this and began testing strategies in saloon with the trample steam and specifically the couch open. And what he discovered was that Okla had been onto something. Issues theorized that the difference between Okla's game and Thyssen Blaster's games came I love down the to something icons. he called the closed zone error. Oh, okay. Where the player spends too long in a zone that the zombies can't get out of. Oh, so that is exactly what causes it. Yeah, it's like within the vicinity. It's like within your vicinity that somehow the game uses more memory. And it's interesting because every COD Zombies game, the way they're built is slightly different. And even during the game, sometimes with BL3 in mid life cycle, like in Zetsubo no Shima, they completely change the engine to gear up towards Black Ops 4 and beyond. And so, and now the COD Zombies is on the Warzone engine, right? So it's very fascinating how every single game has these slight nuances. Wow. So in Black Ops 2, it's a vicinity thing, right? Plus the death animations. That's a huge thing. And it makes sense. This was running on Xbox 360, boys. It makes sense. Now, it's wow. hard to prove that this is an actual thing. No, but during it definitely tests, has to be. The issues had run where he simply stood still in closed areas like the buried saloon or the transit power room. He would get errors after a certain amount of time. Wow, so issues okay. decided to take on Oakla's play yep. style, only with more preparation. He found a much more consistent trample steam strategy for the requirements. It was a variation of the closed couch. What I love about this area is that you can jump on the tables like they're showing. No other area really has this other than until you get to Cold War where you can sort of mount everything. But Burig, this saloon area was so unique. And it literally became the reason how 255 was started to become possible. That's beautiful, man. Strategy. Wow. With a different hoard up route to account for the zombies now having three paths to the right. player instead of two. I see. Much easier, right? Wrong. <laughs> this is one of, if not the hardest high round strategy in all of Black Ops 2 zombies. I would say probably all of COD zombies, bro, because BO2 zombies are quite heavy. They're quite meaty. And what I mean by that is they can box you in very easily. That's why, like, any strat on this game is quite difficult, especially one where all these hitboxes come so close to you and can just basically corner you so easily. That's crazy, wow. This is because it often requires freestyle training. Right. The same path for the on the fly doesn't work every time. Yeah. Due to variations on how many zombies run in from what direction at what time, how they pull to the player around the tables in the room, how much you get slapped while running a certain loop of the strategy, yeah. etc. So not only do players have to have incredible off-the-cuff decision-making, 
They have to keep it up for tens of hours. Unreal, the man. One mercy wow. of the issues trample seam strat is that when you go down. See, like, how did he even get cornered there? There was one zombie that was on the hitbox of like a stool, and it literally cornered him in there. That's insane. And yeah, if you get cornered, you're done. The couch is open. The zombies will actually run away from you and act normally. Right. Instead of standing around you like they're in Times Square on New Year's Eve. <laughs> so double downs are I don't see any best. movement out there. But this speaks to just how impressive Buried's next world record would actually be. Wow, wow. By the summer of 2023, Issues had practiced his homebrewed strategy enough for a real game. He started out with the classic strategy of seven resonators per turbine. The OG. Jug. The way I got to my 100, baby, let's go. Because <laughs> it was much faster and safer to get close to record. Yep. Issues would end up getting the fastest buried 200 times wow. of only 42 hours and 37 minutes. That is very fast. Bro, because it almost took me 10 hours to get 100. He got it in like 7. <laughs> Crazy. Beating the previous 200 speed wow. record by more than 15 minutes. That's insane. Then, in the late game, he switched to using Trample Steam in Saloon. So he just had a like solid run. Oakla had done in the past. Issue's advantage was his new strat, and on 229, he put it into action. Clearly, he had practice. It also looks like he's playing on controller. That might also help in an area like this where you really have to turn fast. That's interesting. Because he played the next wow. four rounds flawlessly. The fact that he hadn't downed at all in the game actually helped a lot because he was able to keep using the Jug Perma Perk, which allowed oh. him to take an extra hit. Yes, Things and if you down after round 15, I believe it is, you lose the Perma Perk. So that's a huge bonus. He's getting pretty much like six hits here. Smoothly that's crazy. He took his very first down of the game on 233. Uh, after attempting oh, a cutback. With two such a space. sad down. But he had room to stick the recovery and power through yep. to the next round. And people always ask, why does he keep his perks when he come back? That is the Tombstone Perma Perk. He's running Perma Perks. This is why BO2 I love. Beating the round that out stood there. as the record for more than three years. Yep. Wow. He successfully completed 234 as well with no problems. However, 235 wow. did have problems. Issues noticed that the zombies' hitboxes were becoming glitchy. Oh, no. This was no. something he knew happened on Die Rise. Whoa! Shortly. See, this is what I mean. You see that one zombie drop, and it literally just boxed him in. Like, it's like the hitbox is already there while the zombie's, like, up on the ceiling. I feel like BL3 had a bit of that as well. Before a player errored. Wow. Halfway through 235, he downed because of this, but managed to get away. That's awful. That was bullshit, bro. Yeah, that was why. Oh, fuck. However, once he had bought Quick Revive back and resumed the strat, not even 30 seconds later, he downed again. Oh, what? dude. I hate the back-to-back -back downs are the most demoralizing thing ever, bro. Especially, he's 71 hours in on this great run. 30 minutes into the, to the round, he's down twice. Ooh. This time, oh, the recovery man. did not go quite as planned. Oh no, and he, does he, does he die here? <gasps> no, he's done. He missed that. Yeah, he's done. Oh no. Oh, that hurts. Ending to an astounding game, I'm so sorry, man. As it could have been. That is pretty he tragic though. Switch strategies extremely late into the game. He estimated that he probably only would have made it to between 240 and 245 before okay. airing. But this game was critical in opening up new horizons for Barry. Literally, he just created a whole new strategy, man. Now everyone wow. knew that the Trample Steam strategy worked, and we could finally see beyond round 233. Oh yeah. Big things were coming to Buried, but they didn't quite play out in the way that people thought. Issues 235 would last for the rest of the summer. But someone else had been cooking on Buried for longer than Issues had even been playing it. They're cooking, man. In September, French-Canadian player Vano, who can only be just Oh, Canada! Dude, yes! My Canadians, listen! I gave the national anthem last time on Wonderful's video. We didn't even win nothing, Canada. Come on, now!
part of the WR history. Let's go, Canada, man. Described as a chronic buried addict. I love my country. Started up his daily gameplay of the map. What he didn't realize was that this bro's particular got, game would- Bro's got the Elden Ring Claymores, bro. That's a true French Canadian right there, baby. Not end until round 236. Let's go. Beating the record by just enough to claim it. What happened until then borders on unexplainable. Oh, dang. First, there's the interesting statistic that Vano played about three quarters of this game while drunk. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's more indicative. <laughs> That's the French Canadian way, baby! For Canada! <laughs> Woo! Yes! For Canada! Of the jug strat or Vano's skill at the game. No, that's just that's just pure French Canadian skill right there, baby. You can't you can't deny that. That is just the most Canadian thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> he also did trample steam for oh, all one bro. and a half rounds this game on 208 and part of 227. Don't drink and drive, especially, and don't drink and play COD Zombies is the lesson. By the statistics we've already gone over, this makes no sense. <laughs> this, this makes no sense. Vanna yep. kept a close eye on his error tracker, and from 224 to 230, he noticed that Child Max didn't increase at all. Oh! Is it because of something he did or didn't do in his game? We don't know. Interesting, but he hit something that no other player has ever hit on Buried. I love my Canadians, man. <laughs> it gets weirder if you can believe that. Vano also got Vulture Aid on 167. Right. And since he had the Tombstone Perma Perk, he had no way to get rid of it. Meaning that he kept the perk for almost 50 hours of game time and didn't error. Oh, interesting. Recent world records had avoided Vulture Aid like the plague, fearing that it would error your game in high rounds. But Vano simply had no fear. Wow! Wait, so you're telling me a drunk French Canadian paved the way for the Bird World Record history? I mean, Canada's making history right here, baby! Let's go! Dude, but yeah, you would really think that Voltrade would cause animation effects that would slow down the game. But for some reason, it didn't. He just, he found it out. Was it just pure luck that allowed yeah, what happened? to snag the record? Whatever the reason, this remains the one of the heck? most unexpected records in Buried's <laughs> history. Meanwhile, I love Canada, though, man. was trying Buried from an even more insane angle than the one he had gotten his world record with. Instead of switching to the Saloon Trample Steam strat only when he was about to error, Issues decided to attempt to do it for the entire game. Whoa. That's right, 70 plus hours of the hardest new strategy in Zombies. Are you insane? Damn, that is insane. What the? He took it on I can never. well. Wow. But he was also facing an adversary even more fearsome than the buried error. 62 hours of running around with the trample team. That is mad. Brazil's power grid. <laughs> in September, he oh, lost the no. game 203 to a power outage. That is literally the saddest thing. I, I would not wish that upon my worst enemy. I am so sorry. El Brazil Power Grid in comments. And another on 190. That's fine. Right That's oh. This spurred him into playing faster That's awful. and faster, more per day, to try to get games done in between the times his power would flicker. He played another game in October to 224, securing Buried's no power world record as he never turned on the power switch or used the turbine. <laughs> I mean, brother's also got no power himself, man. Dang. But his PC blasted <laughs> for his <laughs> own reasons. Man, Brazil power grid, L dog. What? Possibly due to having an That's so sad. Windows operating system. Oh, probably. Still, this game was monumental in pushing Buried to its final stretch. Dude, Windows pushes so many updates. I even get updates for like Express VPN. That's how I died on my 100 run for Transit, man. Crazy. You see, Issue's error tracker during this game indicated that he would have had enough time before the error to get 255. No way! By now, the true difference between the classic strategy in the Jug Hallway with the Resonator and the Trample Steam strategy in the Saloon with the Couch Open had been discovered. Wow! At Jug, the Child Max variable would increase by about 300 to 400 per hour of gameplay. 
In saloon, child max only increased by about 100 to 200 per hour. Dude, it's literally the same entity thing that was on Call of the Dead. This piece of knowledge has literally transformed the old COD Zombies games. Like, for example, Call of the Dead 100 solo was not thought possible until we figured it out that you can just use the VR-11 and have the other zombies die and go through it faster. This is crazy, man. Wow. And despite the fact that Issue's trample seam strategy was about so hold, five to six two times faster forward, slower than the jug hallway strategy, taking an extra five to six. It uses to less of the entities. Zombies, he was still on pace to reach two fifty five before a reset. Who would have known that the answer was the trample steam the whole time, man? Wow. Buried was one of the few maps where reset had never been a problem before. Right. But when dealing with slower strategies and pushing back the air, the notion that a single game of Buried could stretch past 115 to 120 hours, the time when Buried would run out of entity slots and restart itself. Which is the major problem for World at War and Black Ops 1 primarily because they're a lot smaller than 100 hours. Like in World at War and Black Ops 1, they're around that 80 hour mark a lot of the time. And so that already limits round progression so much more so in World at War and Black Ops 1 than with BO2. Which is why I think 255 could be possible on any BO2 zombies map that has the trample theme or buildables. I think... Origins and Transit, I personally don't think you will ever see a 255. Maybe Transit, but not Origins, because you can only rely on the tank. And Transit mostly on the bus, which is just so slow comparatively. Suddenly That's crazy. A very real idea. Wow, wow. Issues black screen in this game was not only disappointing for him, but the whole buried community. As Issues was the only player around at this time who could actually pull off this insane strategy without dying. That is another level of zombie skill. Like, you have to realize, Wonderful is saying he was the only one able to pull off a strategy that crazy for 70 hours, man. That is something else, bro. Well done, Issues, bro. That's crazy. Other players, such as Mao XP and Vano, were attempting an easier but slower version of the Trample Steam strategy that utilized a bottleneck on the candy shop roof. But it was discovered when looking at the error tracker that this strategy errored early too. Oh, he errored at 105, bro? What the heck? Yeah, so that also helped confirm, he just said, might be the zombies jumping animation. It makes so much sense, to be honest. It's some sort of way that they are coded to have a bunch of extra entities. Because when I'm making Die Rise Remaster, I mean, I'm not making it. But when I see Zell and Dobby making it, we see that in a lot of Die Rise, there's a lot of strange jumping leap animations. And so it makes sense for the game to use more memory on those portions of the game it makes sense totally makes sense instead those players moved on to more error testing right and this turned out to be very productive vano discovered that phd flopping the zombies in the early game increased the error oh and Mao showed that picking up the numerous parts and entities that spawned in upon starting the map also gave players a lower child max variable by the end of the setup. This is just the exact same thing like in BO1 and World at War. Like, it literally makes sense. On BO1 Keynoter Toten, for example, all the world record players get rid of all the quick revives to disappear the quick revive machine for lower variables. Just makes sense. It's an entity count. It's all about using less things or disappearing certain buildables on the map to give you that much extra more memory. Crazy, man. And by far the wow. oddest discovery was that spawning in as Russman gave a lower child max start as well. Oh, so, so they have it literally different between the actual characters. That's interesting. It's probably nothing to do with the way they look. It's more so based off of how many textures or designs were put onto that character model. That is, I mean, that also makes a lot of sense too. So it makes sense that they're different. Yes, players restarting until they got Russman as their wow. character was an actual thing. Dude, I, this is, I think, the character i got to round 100 with bro Rustman and misty let's go issues took these community findings into account and continued in december he played another earth shattering game wow what a save another 200 plus with his strategy however things started going downhill on 208 
Uh-oh. While using Leroy to continually get max ammo to switch his perk drop from the witches every, <laughs> Love that strat. every time he got <laughs> vulture aid, issues accidentally killed the witch with Leroy. <gasps> oh this no! Meant he had to go get the free perk from the piano player Easter egg. Right, with the ballistic when knife. When he spawned in the zombies again, the child max value jumped up by nearly a thousand. Whoa! It kept going up at an alarming rate. Whoa! Was it because of something he accidentally triggered that nobody knew about? We're not sure, but either way, ish- What the heck? So it is some sort of variable with- I think it's death animation specifically. Because you think about it, there's a lot of different enemies on Buried or ways they could be taken out. Like how Leroy stomped on the witch there pretty much. So who knows? Maybe the game just doesn't recognize that. It makes sense, She's man. She had given up on this game a few rounds later. And although he continued to play it out, he ended up dying on 234. Wow. Then he went on Christmas vacation, and everyone expected <laughs> Barry to go on hiatus while he was gone. However, it did not. Wow. Over the past few months... Somebody was cooking is what I'm about to hear. One other person had been spending hours Blasters. and hours mastering issues. Strategy. Brother, yes. A familiar name in the buried scene, Blasters. And shortly after Issue's 234 game ended, Blasters started up his own game. Based on the new early game era. And brother got the record, bro. He said, I'm about to cook for the One Piece French fan lovers, baby. Let's go. Discoveries. He played as Rustman, picked up all the parts and debris off the map, and camped in the jug hallway for the first 45 rounds to avoid flopping the zombies and increasing the error. I think this is personally a better strat, also because the Mark II is so good at penetration. So yes, he also totally, in totally agree. Footsteps of never turning the power switch on. Oh, this is interesting. For several things, a it increases the reset time by several yep. hours. B it keeps Child Max from jumping up as much in the setup. Yep. And C it keeps Vulture Aid from activating if you get the perk. So it's also pretty much just used to reduce the entities for everything. And it seems like any animation, like the power turning on, because yes, that causes a lot of memory, even on custom zombies. You'll play custom zombies, you'll turn on the power, everybody just freezes for like four seconds and then they come back. So you never have just, to worry about it. That makes sense. Planet. Yeah. The way to get active perks with the power off is by downing yourself with the tombstone perma perk. Any perks oh. you have will be given back to you activated when you're revived. Oh, that's genius! What the heck? Bro, Tombstone Perm Perk better than the actual perk, man. That is crazy. Blasters Another effect it does. ...knowledge to work as he powered through round after round on Saloon Trample strategy. He was mirroring Issue's best games, keeping his error variable low as he passed 200. Okay. He was grinding like a maniac, too reaching 220 and nearly 75 hours of gameplay in just wow. one week. Wow. His endurance was peaking as he played long session after long session. 75 hours per week, bro? That is literally like over 10 hours a day. What the frick, man? What the also, for people wondering if these textures are considered illegitimate, no. You can literally just go into the older games, especially Black Ops 1 and 2, and just switch up the textures. This is known that this is not cheating by any means. This is But one thing was getting sketchier the longer he continued. Downs. Yeah. You can take a lot of downs on this strategy as long as you can recover and get quick revive back. You're bound to take a down because of that drop animation, in my opinion. You're bound to. Back each time. The way players do this is by going through the witch's house, saving the last witch, getting the time bomb, and then yep. killing the witch. There's a 50 50 chance the perk will be Vulture Aid, and if that happens, the player uses the time, the time bomb, bomb to respawn the witch. Yep. Spawns a drop with the bank and feeds Leroy candy until he changes the drop into a max ammo. Then the player can throw down the time bomb again and repeat the process until they get quick revive. This guarantee. It's such a toss up, though. Everything in Buried is a toss up. That's why I love the mechanics. Like, even getting a max ammo, you're getting Leroy to spawn it in, and you waste a thousand points every time with the candy. And Buried is hard to get points because buildables don't give you points. 
right? That's the biggest ploy. And so you better have a max out bank or you're going to run out of cash real fast. And so it's really important for those first 40 rounds that you're farming points and also spacing out when you get a perk from the witch, because you can only get them once every five rounds, right? He's quick. That's insane. Time. Yeah. And also guarantees it's always a toss up to activate or use vulture aid. And Burry does only have seven perks. I know I thought it had more, but no, it does not. Which ruins the strategy with its green smoke and error tendencies. Yeah. However, if you've ever played Buried, you know you can only get a free perk every five rounds. Yes. Blasters had about 15 downs by 220, which oh, if you think no. about over the course of 75 hours is not that bad. No, that is extremely impressive. About a down every five hours. But at 220 That's plus, insane. five of Blaster's rounds took about five hours or more. Oh, man. Which meant going longer and longer without Quick Revive if the zombies trapped him, while the Witch's House perk drops were still out of stock. Finally, on 222, after taking another down, Blaster's decided to just play the Jug Hallway strategy for a while, as it was infinitely safer and he still had a lot of leeway before the air. It is infinitely safer. That strategy is so nice because they only come from one direction. They can't just drop down. That strategy would have been broken if Treyarch programmed it like that. The way they actually programmed it is that above you where you can go to get that buildable table, the zombies jump from one side to the other, but it's very, very rare. Like even in like 10 hours of gameplay that I played, I I don't think I even saw it once. Like, it's very rare. As he continued here, though, he calculated that his child max variable was low enough that yeah. he could play the entire rest of the game at Jug. Wow. This was the final duel for Buried. So that is so crazy. So he used such little amounts of entities throughout the first 220 odd rounds. And now for the last 30, he can just play it as normal with the buildables. That's insane. Wow. As what a smart idea flocked into his stream to watch the game so it makes you wonder like can we do this on transit right where instead of getting the staffs and whatnot we just kill the zombies with the tank or the bus on origins and and all that you know just would that get us the 255 on those maps maybe everyone maybe. realized it was only it would be painful time. Blasters bounced back and forth between the saloon and the jug hallway for a few rounds, but switched permanently to Resonator at 2.34. Wow. He had to place the turbine up top by the workbench. Be so that is like literally doing 95% of the run in this strategy with Trample Steam, and then doing the last 5% in normal strat. You wouldn't be able to do this with Die Rise though, because on Buried, the only thing that's infinite damage is the subsurface resonator, I guess. I didn't, we don't even know if it's actually infinite damage, but I guess it is if 255 is the max round, right? So interesting how that is, because you know. Because the turbine affects the jug... Couldn't do it on Die Rise though, because it caps at 100, right? Same thing with a couple other maps, like Jet Gun, I think also, maybe you could do it with the Jet Gun on origins you couldn't do it because the, st the ice staff caps eventually machine while the power is off it will turn off the player's jug perk when it starts to stutter however this also just made the turbine safer from the zombies blasters cut down vano's world record blazing through round after round and the impossible suddenly became very real players had been thinking 255 might be possible but the lull in the record progression when it became stuck at 233 for years had made the community doubt whether it would ever be seen. I also think it's very impressive that this record was achieved literally this year because a lot of people are upset with the current state of COD Zombies and still the fact that the OG COD Zombies gamers are still going this hard and finally managed to beat Black Ops 2 is a testament to how incredible these games are, man. Insane. Now we could literally see it on the screen that Blasters was going to hit it. Yeah. But no one would believe it until they saw it. Until they it. saw it, yeah. See that? Wow, see what that? a moment, bro. Oh my gosh. Look at that chat. Dude, seriously, this is this is a once in a lifetime moment. Seriously, this is a groundbreaking moment. Well done, Blasters, man. GG, bro. Oh Wonderful is also in that chat. Oh, Jumpy's in this there, bro. Yogurt's in there, bro. This, all of the boys are in there, bro. All the BO2 lovers are in there. That's Max crazy. On Black Ops 2, after which the round number won't even go up anymore. 
The only yeah. two other games this had been accomplished on were Black Ops 3 and Cold War. And I guess Black Ops 4, but Black Ops 4 is, I, I think, max round is also 935. We still don't actually even know what the max round is for BO4, but I believe it's 935. I, 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 it's, I think it's just the way that it counts up is really dumb in Black Ops 4. Like, it goes to 255, but then it, like, recounts it up as well. It's very bizarre. It's very bizarre, but yeah. I guess, technically, BO4 doesn't count. But this felt so much different than those. This felt like a record we were never meant to reach. For especially real. Especially after so long fighting an error that we couldn't understand. The trample scene was the answer the whole time. What a buildable. I'm excited for Die Rise, man. But here we the were. The map that introduced it. This wasn't it. just an accomplishment for Blasters, but the whole community. In case you were curious, Blasters actually played out all of round 255. Yeah. And this is what happens when you finish the round. Same thing as BO3, right? Ouais, non mais vraiment, hein, t'as pas tant traîné que ça, hein. Vraiment, hein. So it's not even a round animation. Like at least on BL3 you got a round animation, but it just still says the same thing. This just the game just pauses and then just starts it up again. It's like you're you beat the game at 255. Like you you just replay the same round over and over. So he's technically on 256, but the counter just stops. Wow. And he still has 15 hours until reset on the top, man. He's only used 1.9 billion entities. That's crazy. What? And he has 2.1 billion. What? Ah, but ça, ça a passé le round. Ouais, ça a passé le round, voilà. Wow. Voilà. So literally just nothing. <laughs> what? So technically, okay, he says it, it says it's about 13, 14 hours more. If he were to continue playing all the way, which I doubt that he did, it would have been another couple rounds, he would have said. My guess would be that he probably could have hit maybe 265 with that amount of time left. Maybe, probably more around 260. Because, I mean, these rounds would have taken easily over two hours, for sure, by here. Like, this is very, very slow rounds. So... You can see his round timer reset in the top corner. Right. So that was about an hour. So, I mean, okay, maybe 270. But it's like, who even cares if the counter doesn't show it, right? And that's the philosophy behind COD Zombies. If the counter stops going, that's the maximum round. That's when you beat the game, right? The only exception to that rule is BO4. And, I mean, it makes sense just because of the way that game was made. And the zombie stops. And World at War, I guess. Spawning for a few seconds. But BO1 and BO2 and BO3, I believe... Now, this is just a guess with BO1, but I believe the max round is 255. But the round Easily. number remains frozen, and 255 simply repeats infinitely. Yeah. Since the normal progression of the game stops... This is functionally the end of the game. Pretty much, yeah. At 107... And it's fair to count that because, like I said, you could technically go through, but the only difference, like like, like I said with a game like BO4, is that it literally counts because of the way the round transitions. This round doesn't transition. He'd be Black Ops 2 Zombies. Blasters, the very first person to have ever done it. 11 Hours years later. 42 minutes. Crazy. Blasters wow. Have literally beaten a game mode World record history. To be unbeatable. He beat it. He beat Black Ops 2 so Zombies. Here's the first question. Wow. What was causing the buried error? And if you're wondering why his kill count was so low, buildables do not count as kills on the scoreboard. So he technically only got 3,000 eliminations with his guns, which is probably just for the first 40 rounds, and then it was trample steam and uh, and turbine after crazy well we still don't know yeah but what i can guess from watching because yes we think it's definitely death animations for sure i believe that's 100 percent part of it or jumping animations but i also believe there's just certain animations in the game that the game sometimes cannot recognize that causes this entity above me to go insane like i said with the buried uh, Leroy stepping on the witch example, it makes sense because there's probably not a death animation for Leroy programmed into the game to take out witches because he was never designed to go inside of the mansion in Buried. So that is the, my guess personally. It's death animations jumping animations from zombies and also potentially other animations that happen around the map like the power switch. We know a lot That's more my than guess. We used to. Yeah. 
we know what variable is crashing the game. Yeah. And we know a lot of things that contribute to it. Yes. But a massive... But we don't know the pinpointed one, the definitive one, which, in my opinion, I think this video states that it's the jumping animation specifically, because those would happen the most often. The amount of things cause it to increase, and it's yeah. hard to pin down all of them. Yeah. Was Okla onto something with his animation theory? I still think he 100% was. And it, there probably is like a multiplier effect within the game of your vicinity. Maybe too many zombies die too close to you at once and your game just ends. Because they were able to replicate that effect on other maps like Transit. Or issues with his trample steam testing and closed zone error theory. What allowed Vano to get the highest round with Jugstrat? Luck? or something else. All of the- The Vano Shrat, the French Canadian thing, <laughs> I don't know, that to me I think was just straight up luck. Bro just got the luckiest game of all time. <laughs> These are just pieces to a puzzle that we only have the outline for. That is really However, cool. It's a continued mystery. Is, like when Killer Chaz discovered that stretching resonators prolonged the air back in 2018, we now know what to do in the game to avoid the air long enough to beat the map. Will we ever truly dig up the cause? Of Treyarch, please. I would love for you guys to explain it. You know, Treyarch actually even owes us a lot of information about Black Ops 3. They said that they would reveal the impossible Easter egg eight years later. We never got any information about that. Eight years later was 2023. It's 2024. So Treyarch, you're officially late. Give us some information about these old games. I know some devs on Twitter are still around, so let us know, boys. You guys know. I know you do. Of course I we're know. Right. We're zombies players. We yeah. have nothing better to do. <laughs> Here's the second and much more existential question. Let's get it. What will happen to Buried Solo now? True, because it's pretty much done, right? Are people going to move on to other maps, which I think would be the best option, but what is going to happen with Buried? The it's world been beat. record can literally never be beaten. Yeah. And Blasters wow. 255 will technically last forever. It's that big of a record. Like, it's that big of a deal. Crazy, Which is crazy man. to think about. Wow. So, is there any point in playing the map anymore? So I still think there is simply for testing and figuring out what can be replicated on Buried towards other maps. Players who once grinded Buried day in and day out, like Mao and Vano, have already quit and moved on to other maps. Dang, yeah, that must be very sad. You've put hundreds of hours into a map and somebody literally beats it. Like, they would have never expected this. But others Crazy. aren't so quick to jump into the rift and call it a day. Let's look at what's happened with Black Ops 3. 13 out of the 14 maps on that game have been maxed out at 255. And many players hold a 255. It is a huge, huge deal. Shangri-La being the only one lagging behind at 248. These 255s started right after Revelations came out, so a bit of a quicker life cycle than the ten and a half years it took Buried to get a 255. It also is because of Gobblegums and the overpowered Wonder Weapons on this game. I mean, there's obviously a difference. And they did not focus on buildables as much in Black Ops 3 for round progression as they did in Black Ops 2, which, I mean, also does a difference. But to keep the game competitive, players made most Black Ops 3 maps a speedrun. Right. And the person who gets 255 in the fastest in-game time is considered the true world record holder for each map. I think there's something more important before people speedrun. While I agree this is a great suggestion, I still believe testing the other maps now with this same child max ideology onto like transit or origins or die rise i think that would be the biggest thing because now it's up for grabs for speedrunners or high rounders to literally beat certain maps on black ops 2 because the only one now is buried can we beat mob of the dead can we beat other maps we'll see you know could this happen to buried a race to 255 i think it should i personally think it should air and strategy yeah. Playing better for less downs and more yep. time save. Maybe even the perfect buried game. Only time will tell. And you. I mean, I would still agree that this is one of the most perfect buried games yet. I mean, he he technically beat the game. You watching this video. You watching this video. Wanna play buried? Oh, I want to play buried. Wonderful, man. 
What? That was going to be the end of the video. Then, while I was finishing up editing this, what Issues just played an even more insane game no and way. got his own 255. Bro, this is what I'm saying. They're hitting the 255s, they're stacking them up like in BO3. Go for the other maps, boys. It has to be possible. I would start with Die Rise. I Die Rise has got a trample seam as well. So I, in my opinion, that map has to be 255-able. It, it really does. I know that map's problem is the elevators causing entity problems. So maybe it would be the first 255, no power. Bro, that would be crazy. Instead that would be insane. It's part way through. He played trample steam in saloon the whole game. Not wow! Even using the turbine once. Oh my fact, gosh! Just to flex, he also intentionally got zero kills on the scoreboard for the first two fifty-five zero kills. What? He trample steam hoarded for a hundred sixteen hours, bro. This is crazy. Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy. The what the? Too. Meaning he killed every single zombie from round one with the trample steam. Go and do this on Die Rise. Achieve your first 255, no power. You can do the same thing with the Perma Perk Tombstone and get all your perks on. This has to be it. This has to be it, bro. Not oh, but there's no turbine on Die Rise. If only you could turn off the power, like in transit. I mean, hey, maybe you could. Only that, but he only had seven downs during this whole game. And he didn't even have wow. to throw a single monkey bomb. At first, in the early- And if you're wondering how you can get seven downs, it's because the witches can keep giving you quick revives after you run out, so. Wow. He thought you might not even get 255. That is seriously as impressive. his error was increasing faster than Blaster's error had. But by some miracle, it slowed down in the later rounds, still leaving itself as a mystery. But the game still tried to end him. On 242, Issues experienced a bug where he could no longer turn left or right. What? Is it like a collision bug with the zombies? Oh no! Oh my gosh, he can't look! Is he playing on controller? This is extremely rare and a bit complicated to explain, but I'll try to simplify it. There's a variable that measures how far you pull your mouse or controller to the left or right to let you look left or right. This is very glitchy on Black Ops 2. I've had my own experiences where sometimes I'll be playing Black Ops 2 and then it just instantly doubles my sensitivity. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, I think a lot of PC players experience this. In my opinion, I think this is a plutonium error. Maybe I'm the wrong. number goes down for left and up for right. Well, that. But uh, he's experiencing it not on plutonium. So maybe it is a BL2 error. Number has a I've never experienced it on BL2. That being positive or negative 2 billion. 147 million. 483,647. The binary integer, man. It takes a hell of a lot of spinning to reach that number, but it is possible. So he literally hit that number just spinning. Y'all are wild. <laughs> it's pretty what? hard to play the game if you can't turn. So t you can only turn a certain amount of times in COD Zombies before your game airs. I didn't even know that. That's Issues wild. figured at this point that the game was over. But the community came together and managed to help him fix it. Let's go, community. The solution was putting his mouse to max DPI and spamming left turns. That what the heck? That made the number drop back down way below 2 billion and he could turn again and continue dude okay this spinning thing if it literally does reduce entities and allows you to do to game could somebody make like a spin bot in the game where you just freaking spin and fly and it like reduces the entities i wonder what that would look like because everybody back in the day, they, you know, all the trolls put their sensitivity up to 14 to spin around like an idiot trying to hit trick shots, right? Who knew that maybe that could be a strat to reduce your time, man? Or to give you more time. And he still barely wow. made it. By 255, Issues had pushed the game to the brink. As by the time he hit the max round, his child max was at over 63,000. Wow. And he was only seven hours away from reset. But finally, after hundreds hours. of hours of attempts that had ended in pure bad luck, 
he too can now say he's finally beaten Barry. Wow. If anything, this gives a pretty good indication of how buried high rounds will be regarded from here on out. An easy and boring map that somehow turned into a massive undertaking, but an incredible accomplishment. And a round 255 with zero kills is literally ridiculous, bro. Map that is truly wow. unlike any other in the zombies community. Who knows? Maybe even I'll play it. Dude, look at that. He's got more downs than kills. That's crazy. I rockstar and Martin Streamer. Thank you for the primers, bro. I'm wonderful. It. And this has been the actual wonderful. This was absolutely incredible, bro. Thanks for watching. Genuinely, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go and check out Wonderful. I've already liked this video. This is a phenomenal video. I really hope to see this on more zombie maps. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what zombies map you think it'll happen on. I think Die Rise, but I'll see y'all. And yeah, that next one, baby.